Well, a warm welcome to this talk. It's Monday the 5th of July. Now, we haven't done anything on vitamin D lately, so there's a good paper came out last month. I actually missed it for a week or two, so I want to review it now. And again, the evidence is accumulating time and time again with all these observational and correlation studies of the efficacy of vitamin D in preventing severe illness. And this one looks at the, um, the correlation between good vitamin D levels and not being hospitalised or low vitamin D levels and being hospitalised. And really the, the deafening silence from governments around the world on vitamin D, with the exception of the Irish government, which has been quite proactive on this and increased its recommendations, is really surprising. In, the, the evidence is just accumulating and accumulating. Now, here is the, uh, the study that we're uh, concerned with. Now, the status of this study at the moment is, um, is accepted. So it's accepted. So it's essentially electronically published. It's not published in the hard copy yet. Um, but if it's accepted, it means it's been peer reviewed already. And it's a, it looks a pretty good study. And it's, it's actually quite modest in what it's claiming. But what it is claiming is, is, is quite valid. So let's look at it here. Now, this is published in the Journal of Clinical um, Endocrinology and Metabolism. So vitamin D deficiency is, is associated with higher hospitalisation risk from COVID-19. Retrospective case control study. Now, unfortunately, it's retrospective, but that's the nature of these studies very often because, and this is probably the main point I'm going to make here, actually, is this study was not funded. Now, it's very hard to get funding for something that you can't make money out of. And for various reasons, governments don't seem to want to take it up. So this study was actually carried out by the clinicians themselves, mostly by the clinicians themselves. So I think it shows the sort of strength of feeling that a lot of doctors have about how important this is. Um, anyway, look at the look at the links there. They're all they're all there. Large scale study, retrospective case control, control study, northwest of England. Two hospital groups. Uh, Lancaster was one, and uh, Tameside and Glossop was the other. So Lancaster was the uh, primary cohort, and Tameside and Gloucester was the the validation cohort. And as we'll see, they were in very good agreement. Now, the objective of the study is hospitalisation with COVID nineteen more prevalent with lower vitamin D levels. So that's kind of the research question, really. Uh, to give you the bottom line on this, yes, it was. There's a few interesting uh, points to note. So um, individuals with results of serum 25-hydroxyvitamin D. Remember, this is the active form of vitamin D in the blood. The active form in the blood as produced by the liver after the vitamin D has come from the skin or from the diet. So individuals who had these results... And this study went on from the 1st of April 2020 all the way through to the 29th of January 2021. So quite a good length of study time. Deficiency was defined as less than 25 nanomoles per litre, which is less than 10 nanograms per mil. In other words, 25 nanograms, 25 nanograms per litre is 10 nanograms per mil. It's the same thing. So that, that was deficiency. Insufficiency was defined at 25 to 50 nanomoles per litre. So deficiency insufficiency. So good to have these definitions. And adequacy was defined as being higher than this. Albeit some people would say that's still a relatively low level. Now the big strength of this study was the cohort size. Very large cohort size. There was over 80,000 people in this study that were recruited in the community. Now, a lot these were people who re were recruited who'd had the vitamin D levels checked in the last year. Now, I know that's not perfect, but it's what they had. But then of the patients that were admitted to hospital, nearly 60% had their vitamin D levels checked in hospital. And there seemed to be fairly good correlations between the two. So, again, it's not perfect, but it's fairly good. And I think it was actually 58% of patients had their vitamin D levels checked actually in hospital when they were hospitalised. So, um. That they were they were the definitions. They were the numbers. Now, of this number, uh, in both both parts of the study, both arms of the study, one thousand eight hundred eight were admitted to hospital, and that sadly six hundred and seventy died. Now, as we'll see later when we look at the results, the vitamin D level in this study was not correlated with death, but it was low vitamin D study was highly correlated with the risk of hospitalisation. So the primary cohort, this was the one in Lancaster, 58,000 people in this study, good study. Medium vitamin D levels in participants who were not hospitalised was 50 
nanomoles per litre, which is 20 nanograms per mil. And the interquartile range, the 50% in the middle there was 34 to 67. So median vitamin D levels in participants not hospitalised was 50. Large numbers, this is fairly good data. It looks it to me anyway. Median vitamin D levels in participants who were hospitalised, 35. 14 nanograms per mil. So patients who were not hospitalised, 50. Patients who were hospitalised, median, 35. Pretty clear water between the two, really. And again, the range is there. The, the middle 50% were 21 50 to 57. So we can see that the people who were hospitalised had lower overall vitamin D levels. The people who were not hospitalised, higher vitamin D levels overall. And the difference between these two groups is P equals 0 0.005. So um, that is 5%. Uh, so that's five in a thousand. So there's there's a 5%, a, a uh, sorry, five chances in a thousand that that result could have arisen by chance. In other words, this is a very significant result. It would be counted significant if it was 10 times less at 0 0.05. Five. So the probability, the p-value, the probability that the result arose by chance, five chances in a thousand that this result could have arisen by chance, pretty uh, unlikely. Therefore, it is a real correlation, highly significant result. Uh, but then they checked with a validation cohort. This was the cohort which was in, what was the other place they did it in? That was in uh, Tameside and Glossop. Um, so this was the validation cohort. Similar findings in the validation cohort. Again, even on its own, it's a good sized cohort. But non hospitalized, it was 47.1, and hospitalized, it was 33. So remember, it was, it, was, uh, it was basically very similar results. Very similar results there. So it had, been, it had been 50. That one was 50, wasn't it? In people that were uh, in the other study. So it's pretty close, and that one was 30. Uh, what was that one? 35 or I think it was 35. So anyway, we see there that there it's up there. I'm looking at the wrong piece of paper. <laughs> so it was 50 uh, and uh, 35 as opposed to 47 and 33. So very, very similar uh, results. And again, the probability of that arising by chance, only five in a thousand that that result arose by chance. So basically what we're seeing is um, two separate cohorts, one of 58,000 368, one of 21,234, different parts of the country, same, very, very similar results. Now, the adjusted odds ratio. So they adjusted here for age and sex, of course. Unfortunately, this study couldn't adjust for obesity. But adjusting for age and sex, um, it, the, the probability was 2.3 to 2.4 times higher. So if you um, had... Low vitamin D levels, you were 2.3 to 2.4 times more likely to be in the hospitalised group. Quite a big difference. Odds ratio of 2.3 to 2.4 times. So if someone says to me, do you want to be 2.3 times less likely to be hospitalised? I would say, yeah, that, that, that's better. It's 2.3 times. It's more than double, more than double. So that is um, a fair uh, difference that was found there. Uh, and the odds ratio for the validation cohort was uh, 2.33. So very similar odds ratio again. 2.33 times more likely to be admitted if you were uh, low in the vitamin D. Now, no association between low vitamin D levels and inpatient hospitalisation, uh, inpatients' hospitalised mortality. In, in other words, patients who were hospitalised who had the lower vitamin D levels were not likely to die. But this is not, not really what that... Um, what that study was um not really what that study was looking at so um that's not particularly significant so it is showing that and in fact when they did the blood levels of people already in hospital the odds ratio went up to about 3.3 i think it was i've got that figure in a minute 2.3 to 3.6 yeah so even more protection for people who had the vitamin d levels measured in Hospital. So what conclusions did the team draw? Looking pretty convincing. Vitamin D level is associated with high risk of COVID-19 hospitalisation. They just make that as a simple statement. Widespread measurement of serum vitamin D and treating any unmasked insufficiency or deficiency through testing may reduce this risk. 
Now, the world is heading into a major third wave in this pandemic in many, many places that are, have low vaccination status. And this study would indicate those health authorities in those areas would do well to consider increasing the vitamin D status of their population if they are deficient, especially as this indicates that would reduce the amount of hospitalizations. Half, more than half the reduced amount of hospitalizations. The study authors say we have clearly demonstrated that vitamin D insufficiency and deficiency exponentially increases the risk of disease by a factor of 2.3 to 3.6, even after adjustment for age and sex. Unfortunately, not for obesity, but they're adjusted for these things. And that is their conclusion. And when they say exponentially as well, we know that the people with the lowest vitamin D levels are actually the worst affected. So increasing level when vitamin D levels a bit, even if they're still not as high as you would like them to be, has big benefit. And this is something I really feel the world needs at this moment. So health authorities around the world would do well to consider this accepted manuscript. And bear in mind, this is in the uh, the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. It's a, it's a reputable journal in this field. Vitamin D is anti-inflammatory and has been shown to modulate the immune system. We know that with its effects on macrophages. In other words, it can turn the immune system up, turn the immune system down, prevent the excess inflammation that's associated with the uh, alveoli filling up with fluid, the respiratory distress syndrome, the acute respiratory distress syndrome. And with its effects on macrophages, which are defensive white blood cells, with its effects on macrophage function and innate immunity, vitamin D may alter the disease manifestations of COVID-19, implying strongly it makes it less severe. They conclude vitamin D supplementation should be an important consideration for deficient populations at risk, especially as many of these populations are waiting for vaccination. Now, this study does say that vitamin D deficiency is more common amongst uh, above the 35th uh, parallel. In other words, in the northern and southern uh, latitudes or below the 35th parallel. But we've actually looked at quite a few studies already on these on these videos that we've been doing, indicating that people in sunny climates who you would expect not to be short in vitamin D actually can be because they often behave in ways that keep them out of the sun. India, for example, we noted that vitamin D deficiency was really quite prevalent despite being a very sunny country. So there you go. Um, vitamin D deficient patients more than twice as likely to be admitted to hospital. Surely this is something governments around the world would want to take on, given the consistency with this, with a mass of other research we've already looked at on plenty of previous videos, given the fact that it's cheap and given the fact that they can recommend this to their populations with confidence that it's going to be a safe preparation for governments to, to recommend. So... Um, UK government, of course, has done nothing. Irish government has. So mark there to the Irish government. No mark to the UK government. We're still recommending 400 units a day, which is 10 micrograms. A very, very, very small dose. Really, everyone should have the vitamin D levels measured and titrated up to this. And the evidence just keeps on accumulating. And unfortunately, we've presented governments with evidence before with limited response in quite a few fields of endeavour now. So... But let, let's hope, let's hope perhaps someone is listening around the world and this can help people to keep out of hospital. And thank you for listening.